a skim synchronization for Zscaler private access. So within my Azure AD portal, I come to provisioning. I can click get started and we'll select automatic mode for provisioning. And we need to provide the tenant URL and the OAuth security token. So in our Zscaler private access administration interface, we click sign in. And we come across to administration IDP configuration. And here is my Azure AD SAML configuration. So we click edit and we scroll down and we enable skim synchronization. Here is my endpoint, which I copy and I paste to the URL and I generate a bearer token. I copy it and I click save and I paste that in there as the secret token and I can test the connection. So supply credentials are authorized. We can click save. And we're ready to configure the SAML, uh, the skim provisioning. So we click mappings, um, click the groups. We don't want to synchronize all records. We only want to synchronize the scope. So we'll add a scoping fil filter and we'll say the group display name includes the value ZPA. And we'll click add scope and filter and we'll say group contains ZPA. And we'll click OK. We'll come back to the provisioning. And we want to do the same for the users. So we don't want to synchronize all records. So we'll say add a scope and filter and we want to synchronize only the accounts that are um, part of the company includes the word Welsh Geek. Um, this account or this tenant of, uh, of Azure AD has multiple users from multiple companies. So I only want to synchronize the, across the users that are a member of this company. So we'll say company contains Welsh Geek. We'll click OK. And we come back to our attribute mappings. So for Azure AD with Zscaler private access, it's going to send across the user principal name, whether the user is active or not, the display name, the user's email address, the given name, the surname, the object ID, and the department. I don't actually want to send all of those over. I don't need the given name or the family name, so we can delete that. Um, we get the display name, which is a concatenation of the two of those. We could add other attributes there as well if we want. If we come back across to provisioning and we look at the groups, it's going to send across the display name, the members of the group, and the group object ID, which is fine as, as well for us. So we can come back to provisioning. We can edit provisioning. We want to turn the provisioning status to on. And as part of that, we'll synchronize all users and groups. So it'll synchronize all users and all groups and then evaluate them against the scoping filters to ensure we only synchronize the appropriate users and the appropriate groups. So we click Save. We can come back here. You can see that it's going to now start the provisioning cycle. We'll wait for the synchronization to occur. Again, this could take up to 40 minutes, so we might do a provision on demand. And we'll search for a group that contains the word ZPA. And you'll see that this contains a bunch of users, so we'll synchronize these two users as part of that, and we'll click provision. And it'll evaluate those against those filters 
against the um, scoping filters to decide are the, is the group matching that um, filter and do the users match the filter and as they did it has now provisioned a group called internet zpa enabled it's then evaluated that those two users are part of that group and it's then created those users through the skin provisioning onto zscaler private access so if we come across to zscaler private access and we go administration and we scroll down to skim users we can see that those two users have been created we can look at the skim groups and there's a group called internet zpa enabled and as part of those users we can see that they're in the department sales the user is active and the full display name has been synchronized across. Other skim attributes could also be returned and sent across as part of the skim synchronization. So if we look at the skim sync logs on Zscaler side, we can see that the group was created, the two users were created, and then the two users were added into the group as part of a patch operation. We've now synchronized with skim and we could use the skim attributes in our access policy. If we add a rule, we can add a criteria, SAML and skim attributes, or we'll select the, the uh, directory and then we can say the skim group attributes and select a skim group to apply the policy object on or a skim user attribute for any of the attributes against the user the display name for example or if the user is active or not so skim synchronization from Azure to Zscaler private access is now configured and we can go ahead and start configuring policy based on those attributes.